is mock draft Monday and the Chicago Bears walk away with an offensive haul. No defense. You know you're getting Caleb Williams, but who else did they get in the top 10? We're going to reveal this and more coming up next. You are locked on NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. You can find and follow me on X at DP underscore NFL. I'm a national scout and a senior draft analyst. I got to kick this intro over to my guy, Mr. LSU himself, Keith Sanchez. You can find and follow him on X at The Talent Code. Keep talking to him, baby. What's up, Locked On family? Let's get locked in. This is Keith Sanchez, the other side to this dynamic duel that we like to call the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, where we bring you everything NFL Draft content, the number one source for NFL Draft content. I want to say shout out to our everydayers. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day. And if you've been rocking with us, you know one thing, that Mondays are meant for mock draft. So mock draft Monday DP. The Bears are getting the offensive hog. The offensive line, they're going to have a run. We're just talking about two, three, four, five consecutive picks of offensive linemen. And then are there going to be great value for these cornerbacks? Is this an underrated class or there's going to be a situation where we have really good value? We're going to get into all that and more coming up next with DP. Before we get started, man, why don't you hit with our title sponsor. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right, guys, we got a CBS Sports recent mock draft. Over the weekend, they dropped this. Uh, so let's get into it. Number one pick, Caleb Williams to the Chicago Bears, quarterback out of USC. At pick number two, the Washington Commanders select Jaden Daniels, quarterback out of LSU. At pick number three, the New England Patriots do not trade out. They select Drake May, quarterback from North Carolina. At pick number four, the Arizona Cardinals select Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver from Ohio State. At pick number five, the Minnesota Vikings trade up with the Los Angeles Chargers and select J.J. McCarthy, quarterback out of Michigan. At pick number six, the New York Giants select Malik Neighbors, wide receiver out of LSU. At pick number seven, the Tennessee Titans select Joe Alt, offensive tackle from Notre Dame. At pick number eight, the Atlanta Falcons select Dallas Turner, edge rusher from Alabama. At pick number nine, the Chicago Bears select Rome Adunze, wide receiver from Washington. And at the 10th pick, at pick number 10, the New York Jets select Talise Fuaga, offensive tackle out of Oregon State. Keith, the Bears. You talk about, you know, and it's such a – people hate the term winners of the draft. But if this actually happened in round one, the Bears won – round one like they 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 walked away with such a great situation to for one they've they, they've done their due diligence like we've talked about numerous times understanding that they did not do the best for justin fields as a as a young quarterback when he first came in right whether it was keeping matt Nagy and the old coaching staff for the for the duration of his rookie year or for the most for the most part of his rookie year to not having the good offensive line not getting him the weapons until what year three uh, which was last year right getting him the weapons last year getting him dj Moore last year with trading with the carolina panthers but for for what they're doing for caleb williams it's simply let's make sure we our hands are clean. So if Caleb Williams busts, it's not gonna be because of us. So nope. getting him keep going, getting Keenan Allen, having DJ Moore, Cole Komet stepping up, getting DeAndre Swift, but then to go ahead, draft Caleb at number one as we expect. That's chalk. But then at nine to get Roma Dunze. One thing it tells me is that you're comfortable with Braxton Jones at left tackle, right? You're comfortable with the offensive line, so you don't go O-line because you could have you could have went uh Olu. Olu didn't go in the top 10. You could have went Olu, you didn't go there, but you went you went Roma Dunze. So now Caleb walks out of the uh, walks out of the huddle or breaks the huddle, Keith, in eleven personnel, and he's got Keenan in the slot, DJ Moore at the Z or X, Rome at the Z, or X, and all three of these guys are interchangeable pieces, especially on those throwing downs. Man, talk to me. How do you feel about this? Yeah, no, I think it's good. And I think the Bears at the number nine overall pick, right? Because we've done enough mock draft Mondays. We've done enough mock drafts ourselves, right? It's to know that 
at pick nine, it seems as though because of where this class is stacked at, wide receiver and offensive tackle, that I feel like they probably should go two offensive players, talking about Caleb Williams, and then they have the option to go wide receiver or offensive tackle regardless, right? Because one of those talented guys are gonna is going to be there. So I think they're in a good spot. And honestly, I don't worry about moving up, moving down. I just say, you know what? If, if you know, hypothetically, right, if it's Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, Joe Out, Olu Fashano, right? Which way, which direction do I go out of those four players? You rank those guys, you put them on your big board, and you're like, hey, all we're going to do is go, because the it, we're going to go best player available because best player available also fits into a team need, right? So I'm all the way into that. DP, I wanted to ask this because we never – had this conversation um how do we feel about because there, there's a lot of momentum picking up to saying that without a doubt it's Jaden will Jaden daniels i'm sorry at pick two for the commanders how do you feel about that just you know the mock draft him with the commanders cliff kingsbury you know that organization the weapons they have the offensive line that they don't have um, you know, just all of those different things, all those different components, because we always say that situations matter. Is that a a good situation for Jaden Daniels? And should the commanders be locked in already on, hey, if he's here, we're gonna take him regardless? Man, I think the I think the situation is good enough for Jaden just off of just first glance, right? The weapons are good. They got a, a solid run game with uh, Brian Robinson Jr. Could they? Could they? Um, could they add more talent there? Could Could they elevate that run game with a more explosive, dynamic runner that's in this twenty twenty four class? You know what I mean? I think you talked about it on one of our episodes. I think it was last week. We took mentioned Trey Benson or mm-hmm. something like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you could because that's a guy that not only brings that physical downhill run style, but he also has breakaway speed. He has an elite gear that Brian Robinson doesn't have, and he can catch the ball. So they could improve that. Uh, I think Cliff, uh, understand that he knows how to coach and call plays for an athletic quarterback. The main thing, Keith, is what you mentioned, the offensive line, right? And the reason why that is the concern for me is because, as I've I've mentioned on this problem numerous times, Jaden has a high pressure to sack percentage. You know what I mean? And, and for those who don't know, it means the, the, the amount of times he's pressured, he's sacked on a lot of those pressures where that was a and, and you remember, I'll keep the energy the same. You know, well, Keith, I I killed Will Levis for that because Will Levis allowed himself to stand in the pocket and not activate his athleticism. And he took hits that he didn't need to take. And sometimes Jaden does the same thing, not triggering that elite running ability sometimes soon enough he allows the pressure to get back he starts to drift starts to try and do stuff but once you get deep deep into the backfield man it's hard to get out of that situation so i think that's where on day two of the draft and i think they have two sec the commanders have two second round picks they do they have two um kind of early to mid second round picks they got to fix this offensive line yeah, I think they have like 33 and 40 or something like that. It's, it's somewhere in that range. Yeah, it's, it's somewhere. I know 33 is the Panthers, but they're not too far well, 30, behind. Yeah, like and they're 30. right. I think they do have like 40. Yeah, I they think, might, I think yeah. they have like 40. So, yeah, they, they have picks to improve the old line. Do you go two offensive linemen in, in, <laughs> in round two? Like, do, are you going to trust two young ones? <laughs> like, it's, it's, a, it's a different situation over there in Washington. Yeah, I mean, but if you end up, you're talking about two young ones, right? If, what if you end, because I feel like one of these offensive tackles is going to fall, right? I think, I think so, too. One of these offensive tackles, and that's not including Jordan Morgan also. So I think yes. if you walk away with a Jordan Morgan, and I don't, just throw out a name, right? Because I'm going to say a name and somebody's going to have them in the top ten. But, like, Jordan Morgan and J.C. Latham, if you could walk away with that tandem in the second round, you roll with it, right? You just say, mm-hmm. you know what? I'm good with that. So we'll see. I just think it's going to be an interesting case study. And like you talked about, the sack to pressure issue. It'll be interesting because Caleb Williams, right? We talked about him holding on to the football, trying to make a play. So I wonder what Jaden Daniels, if, if it's more of the same, right? Trying to make yeah. a play, trying to escape the pocket, trying to buy more time. So it would be an interesting situation. I was just surprised that right now, that is kind of starting to become more clear cut or people start, there must starting to be more rumors about him going to the commanders and that's just locked in and locked in low. And I think a lot of that keys from what I've heard, I think it's because I can't remember the guy's name, but he's one of the, I think he's one of the front office members now, one of the new front office members. I think it's Adam. Yeah. Is it Adam Peters? I can't remember who it is, but he was with Cleveland when they chose Baker Mayfield over 
Josh Allen during the time. It was because Josh Allen was, they viewed Josh Allen as such a project compared to they knew what Baker was. And so now revisionist history, hindsight is 2020. Yeah, you might have wanted to go with Josh, but then at the same time, I don't know. I've said this about Mahomes. You can say it about Josh Allen. You throw any of these top tier quarterbacks and put them in Cleveland, they probably don't become top tier quarterbacks because of that situation, and how dysfunctional they were. So I don't know. I think that's where that rumor really is like stemming from is that the that guy who's part of the decision making team for the commanders decided to pass on Josh Allen because of the technical issues that he had mechanically and it's kind of similar stuff when you look at drake me he's very raw from a, a mechanical standpoint with his with his base and his footwork and stuff like that that has to be improved yeah i agree i agree 100 but we'll see I and mean, we don't know if this is smoke and mirrors dp because this is smoke and mirror season but coming up Absolutely. next week we're going to go through picks 11 through 20 of the latest mock draft from cbs Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your number one ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your number one ride or die live at ebaymotors.com. Keep your number one ride or die live at ebaymotors.com. With the 11th pick, the Los Angeles Chargers at the trading down select offensive tackle out of Alabama, J.C. Latham. With the 12th pick, the Denver Broncos select Brock Bowers, tight end out of Georgia. At, uh, with the 13th pick, uh, the Las Vegas Raiders select Quinion Mitchell, cornerback out of Toledo. At pick 14, the New Orleans Saints find their new left tackle, Olu Fashionu, uh, from Penn State. At pick 15, the Indianapolis Colts select Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver out of LSU. At pick 16, the Seattle Seahawks select Troy Fautanu, offensive line, interior offensive line, out of Washington. At pick 17, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Terion Arnold, cornerback out of Alabama. At pick 18, the Cincinnati Bengals select Amarius Mims, offensive tackle out of Georgia. At pick 19, the Los Angeles Rams select Leatu Latu, edge rusher out of UCLA. And at pick 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers go with Graham Barton, offensive tackle, offensive lineman. Looks like he's going to play center here uh, for the Steelers with uh, out of Duke. So, Keith, there's a nice little run on offensive linemen in this top, in this, you know, from 11 to 20. Um, yeah. and, and I like to start right here at 11. Um if you're if you're the, the Chargers and you're going to trade back, we know that this is why I do have some questions when it comes down to what this Chargers team is going to accomplish in 2024, what Justin Herbert is going to accomplish in 2024. I might be avoiding him in my fantasy leagues because I don't know if they're going to throw the ball enough. And if they select a J.C. Latham, that lets me know right off the rip. We're about to see Michigan 2.0, baby. We're about to see heavy run game. We might see some wing T. We're about to see some all, all type of like just smash mouth power football. But this is a position of need for him, a right tackle. You know what you have in Rashawn Slater um, and everything. I think the interior offensive line is solid and good enough, but they did need to get the right tackle. J.C. Latham is going to bring that pop, that physicality, that attitude to this offensive line, especially to this run game. Yeah, no, I agree. And that's the first thing that jumped off to me, you know, when we started reading these picks 11 through 20. Second thing is that, DP, we've seen, I've done it. I think you've done it with your latest mock draft. We've seen plenty of mock drafts where in this 11 through 20 range, there's a quarterback taken, mm -hmm. like Bo Nix and Michael Penix. But in this mock draft, they don't have either one of those guys being selected, right? I, when I look at it, DP, I, I'm trying to, I think that's going to be the biggest talking points of the draft, right, is not 
the core four that we always talk about, right? Those four guys we expect to go in the top ten. But when will the next two quarterbacks? Because when the next two quarterbacks get taken off the board, they are going to push the. I feel like the whole quarterback board up, right? Because mm -hmm. that's when you know you potentially see the Spencer Rattler come off the board, right? And then you know you start diving into the Michael Pratt, and you know it's going to shake a lot of different things up. So I, I don't, I don't know if I foresee. Bo Nix and Michael Penix falling past pick 20 because there are going to be so many other teams jockeying for position. So I think that's going to be interesting. Next up, the Brock Bowers to Denver Broncos situation. Um, I don't know if I particularly care for it, DP, because didn't and, – and if I – remind me – because I, I know he played for Seattle and I know he played for Denver. But no offense was drafted to Denver, right? And mm -hmm. that was a high-level tight end prospect as far as an athlete. And I don't feel like they got a lot of burn and usage out of him because they didn't have a quarterback to throw him the football. So right. that's going to be my concern with that. And then just to wrap it up, we've had the conversation on our – and it's it's going to get released soon, man, but just the, the locked-on um, NFL mock draft, right? The, the, the NFL-wide mock draft is going to be really cool. But – the Brian Thomas to the Indianapolis coach. The more I think about it, the more I like it. DP, I was just at the spring game um, two days ago, Saturday, right? So I, I seen Brian Thomas in person, got an opportunity to talk to him. Um, every bit of 6'4", right? Long guy, has length. Um, we know he can run right, ran a 4'3". But I always talked about which situations he needs to be in. This is the perfect situation for him. He has two other big body wide receivers that can serve as the possession guys, the short to intermediate route guys, right? And he can consistently just take the top off the defense while he learns the rest of the route tree and development and understanding how to run routes. And then also you still have a smaller shift to your guy and our guy, Josh Downs from North mm -hmm. Carolina. So I'm, I've been kind of back and forth of Brian Thomas first round, where do you put him? You know, but I love him in this situation. It's the exact type of situation he needs to go to. No, hundred percent Q to real quick to your QB, to your QB comment. I think that's, that's the big storyline after the top, after the top 10, it's like, where do these quarterbacks land? And like, how how do we get seven in the top 60, right? Because when Penix and Knicks come off the board, you think yes. about the team, let's say the Giants aren't able, I know the Giants are trying to move up, you know what I'm saying, to, to but get in that top four and get a quarterback. But what if they don't? 100%. Everybody can't move up, right? You have the Patriots who need a quarterback and they see if they trade back, okay, cool. they're probably going to trade back with the Giants of Minnesota, right? Like somebody's going to be left out of this equation. The yeah. You know, people talk about, hey, the Raiders and should they go up and go get a quarterback? Okay, that's another team that need a quarterback, right? The Denver Broncos, hey, should they go get a quarterback? Okay, cool. What, what are they going to do? The Dallas Cowboys, right? Hey, what are they going to do with Dak Prescott in that situation? Right. Yeah. So, it's too many teams, and and the, we talked about it. We talked about this at the very beginning of the draft cycle. We talked about the supply and demand, right? There, there's there's a whole lot of demand for the quarterback, so I can expect. I'm, that's why I'm expecting this to be one of the more wild drafts because it's going to be teams positioning themselves to get their hands on some of these high level, you know, what they believe to be high level quarterbacks. So it's going to be interesting. But DP, the back end of it, right, 15 through 20, the any selections that pop up to you that you like, man, I really like this, or you're looking at it the other side, like, man, I'm not so sure about this. Oh man, I thought I I think this was a pretty well done thing. I'll go back to 15 to your point to Brian Thomas. Man, I, I love that fit. The big arm, you know, that we know that Anthony Richardson has. He has a top five arm, maybe top three in the league. To be able to put this type of talent with him on the outside, and this is a team that's gonna run the football, Keith. Like Jonathan Taylor, Anthony Richardson, the read option, the RPO game. You're going to be able to get some single one-on-one -on -one matchups for Brian Thomas Jr., as well as some of the other guys, right? Michael Pittman, Josh Downs. You hope that they're that, that Jelani Woods, who they drafted, I think, last year, you will hope that he could take a step at the tight end position to give him another big athletic weapon, especially in the middle of the field. But I love that fit for Brian Thomas Jr. to the Colts. But then for me, Keith, I'm 19, man. What do we, how do we, you know what I'm saying? 19. Now I know Aaron Donald's not there anymore. Because if Aaron Donald was there and you get Latu, that's 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 too much. That's yeah, we too have, much. And we have to recognize Kobe Turner, right? As a yes. rookie came on and did some crazy things as far as sack production. So yeah, I'm mean, him, Kobe Turner, Byron Young, and Latu yeah. Latu. You ready to roll, DP, and I like that. And then, and you know, and we obviously we had the podcast last year, but you know, I was a big Byron, Byron Young guy. Damn. You know, 
far as first step explosiveness and everything. And he started to turn dividends last year. So I'm I'm with you. Late two, lot two there. That's crazy. Now we I think it gives him a big three. I think it gives him a young big three on that D line, Keith. That you know, like, hey, I can't double just anybody, right? Like, you know, yep. if you want to try and take Kobe Turner away, cool. Byron Young can get after it. Lay two can get after. It. And these guys all complement each other. This is this would be a great move for them if lay two fell to them at 19. I agree 100% and just wrapping it up with Graham Barton. I like that. We talked to our guy, um, Williamson, Matt Williamson, right? And he talked about still the nation. And I didn't know that it was that important, but he talked about what the center position has meant to the mm -hmm. Pittsburgh Steelers as far as the organization, but just the fan base also. They pride themselves in having good centers, right, from the pound season. Then I forgot the other center he was telling me about was kind of before my time, DP, you know, a little bit before my time. <laughs> yeah. All the same center, right? Just back to back to back, uh, putting together some Hall of Fame centers. So Graham Barton looked to be next in line for that. But DP coming up, picks 21 through 32, and I see it every single week. These are my favorite picks because I think this is when things start to get interesting. You have your playoff teams, you have the Super Bowl champion, you have the teams that are on the verge of making the playoffs. So let's see what they add to their rosters to see if they can get over that next hump and take that next step. So coming up next, picks 21 through 32. We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low, not sure if you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game. Pull off some bank heists and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right, the smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go. Let you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking bar. Charge other players for rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go. Now free on the App Store or Game Play. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game right now new customers get 150 dollars in bonus bets guaranteed that's 150 bucks win or lose bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks all on the app that is safe secure and super and i mean super easy to use all right. Again, bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks. All of this on the app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. What are you waiting for, guys? Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win because FanDuel is America's number one sports book. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our every day. So let's bring this thing home. At pick 21, the Miami Dolphins go with Jared Verse, edge rusher from Florida State. At pick 22, the Philadelphia Eagles select cornerback Cooper DeGene uh, from Iowa. At pick 23, again, with that trade with the Minnesota Vikings, the Los Angeles Chargers select Byron Murphy II to go on their defensive line. At pick 24, the Dallas Cowboys find their new left tackle, Tyler Guyton, offensive tackle out of Oklahoma. At pick 25, the Green Bay Packers select cornerback Kool-Aid McKinstry out of Alabama. At pick 26, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Chop Robinson, edge rusher from Penn State. At pick 27, the Arizona Cardinals select Darius Robinson, edge defensive lineman out of Missouri. At pick 28, the Buffalo Bills select Adonai Mitchell, wide receiver out of Texas at pick at pick 28. I'm sorry. At pick 29, the Detroit Lions select Ennis Rakestraw Jr., cornerback out of Missouri. At pick 30, the Baltimore Ravens select Jordan Morgan, offensive tackle, offensive lineman out of Arizona. At pick 31, the San Francisco 49ers select Lad McConkey, 
wide receiver out of Georgia. And at pick 32, the Kansas City Chiefs select Nate Wiggins, cornerback out of Clemson. Keith. I, I, I know you go first, but I have to cut you off. I got to stay at the bottom because I, I haven't seen this, and I don't know if this is because of the Brandon Ayuk smoke. Led mm -hmm. me to the San Francisco 49ers. And I'm going to ask you, I'm going to toss it right to you, what is your initial reaction about this? Man, that's a great fit. I mean, route runner, guy that can get open, a guy that will make um, make life easy in terms of in that offense, getting quick, getting open quickly for Brock for Brock Purdy, right? We know this is a guy that you typically, as a quarterback, you don't want him holding the ball too long. So his, with him being a quick decision maker, a guy like Lad McConkie with his route running prowess, understanding of, of leverage and zones and everything else, he'll be a great fit. And I do think this is something countering that smoke with Brandon IU because the smoke right now is that the Pittsburgh Steelers are zero, zeroing in on trading for Brandon Ayuk, right? To give Russell Wilson what? slash Ooh. Justin Fields uh, a number a number one A, one B target with George Pickens and everything. So I think this will be a good fit for him. Now, can he walk in and replace the, the shoes of Brandon Ayuk? I don't think so because Ayuk gives you route running, speed, and ball skills and physicality. He's an outstanding run blocker. He's physical after the catch. It's a different type of receiver that you be getting with lad so uh, where if you keep brandon now you i think this is still a good pick because then lad goes directly into the slot you know what i'm saying out to to pair with debo and and iu I, I would say this yeah and but i think i agree that brandon iu gives you something different but i wonder if it's one of those situations dp where does it even matter for the 49ers because of how their offensive structure is? And there's such a middle of the field, in my opinion, like operating the middle of the field offense, that Lad McConkey's skill set may be a better fit than what Brandon Ayuk says. It's not because he's a better overall player, yeah. but because what Brandon Ayuk does or what he could be, they don't necessarily use all of his traits anyway. You kind of get what I'm saying? Good point. Wonder if that's why I went this selection. But when I seen it, I was like, hold on. I'm like, I've never seen Lad McConkey to the San Francisco 49ers. And like I said, I wonder if this is all for the potential Brandon Ayuk hype. And honestly, DP, this is one of those, you know, you always say like who won, who lost. Like if the Pittsburgh Steelers get Brandon Ayuk and the 49ers get um Lad McConkey, like who won that trade, who lost that initial reaction, I'll be like, I think both teams won, right? Because yeah. the Pittsburgh Steelers need another wide receiver. And I've consistently talked about this. George Pickens, in my opinion, is really good at what he does, right? And then you have Brandon Ayuk, who's kind of the more well-rounded guy mm -hmm. in that, that wide receiver room. But I had to just talk about that real quick because that was an interesting take. But DP, you take it away, baby. If you have any other um, spots you wanted to talk about. Man, uh... This one right here, pick 24. Pick okay. 24. Tyler Guyton. I love this because we've talked about Tyler Guyton before. We be, like Tyler Guyton is the type of athlete that can flip over from right to left. And yep. without Tyron Smith, I don't want to move Tyler Smith, who just had an all-pro year. And I think he did an interview on, I think, Brock Hoffman, who's, I think, supposed to be the starting center. Uh, he has a podcast. Now, I read a quote where Tyler Smith doesn't, doesn't sound like he wants to move to left tackle after having an all pro year at guard. So I say, don't move him. I say, you go ahead and grab a Tyler Guyton, a guy you want to get a guy, even though he played predominantly, right? He has the athletic traits and ability as a former tight end and his movement skills are outstanding that he can absolutely flip to the left side and he just got to get the muscle memory down. But I think he has one of the highest ceilings in the tackle class, just bar none. You know what I mean? With the height, the arm length, the movement skills, the strength. And also, I think run game, as we've talked about, he's a good run blocker. Keith, you're talking about latch, uh, you know, latching his hands into guys, straining, running guys off the spot, different things like that. Pairing him with Tyler Smith, I think that's going to give you a strong left side in the run game. I think this will be a very – to me, this might be a steal at 24 – you know what I'm saying? For it's as talented of a guy as Tyler Guyton is, and it just speaks to the level of talent at this offensive line class. I agree. Comparing these guys, both high-level athletes, both exceptional height, length, everything else, my actual, who would you rather? Because I do think this is a steal in the situation of him falling to 24. But like we keep saying, I, these offensive tackles, I think they're going to fall, right? Because they're just other positional needs. Teams are going to want to draft other things. Who would you take, Tyler Guyton or Marius Mims? 
because Ooh. not exit because the Cincinnati Bengals went Amarius Mims in this mock draft at what nineteen twenty. Yeah, yeah, he yeah I think he was eighteen eighteen to the Bengals. That's that's a good question. I think pass set wise, if you're a team that's going to pass the ball a ton, I think Mims is more clean is cleaner than Guyton right now. I think run game Guyton's the is like clearly the better guy in the run game. I think both of them can switch to left because they're both athletic enough. I think Guyton's the better overall athlete than Mims. You know what I mean in terms of explosion and and speed and quickness and quick twitch. Whew. Uh, I think it uh, I think it really depends on the philosophy of your team. If you're gonna run the ball and run it heavy early on, I think you want to look at Guyton because again his pass uh pass protection. Upside is there, but if you're going to pass the ball out the gate a lot, I think Mims would be a guy I feel more comfortable with um, in terms of hand usage, stuff like that. He's still he's still young and has to develop himself, but I feel better with him in pass protection than I do in run blocking right now. Yeah, no, nah, and it's gonna make it's just gonna make it fun, DP, because there's what eight offensive, eight, nine, ten offensive tackles, right? And mm-hmm. we know that just pure numbers, right? Everybody's not going to work out. So just us as talent yeah. evaluators trying to figure this thing out and, you know, who has the traits, whose traits will be developed in what situations and scheme, who's going to be that right tackle that gets flipped over the left, who's going to be that left tackle that gets kicked, that gets kicked down to guard, or, you know, just different things like that. I think it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to make it's going to make for a good conversation and good talking points. Uh, but just looking at it, DP, we had Byron Murphy to the Chargers. The Chargers wrapping this thing up real quick, um, grabbing Byron Murphy and then also grabbing the offensive tackle, J.C. Latham. How do you feel about that haul for them under the hardball era? I mean, it speaks to, to to becoming more physical on the front lines. We've criticized this defense for not stopping the run for it feels like four to five years at this yeah. point. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's been a long time, and it's like bringing Byron Murphy in, the same way they're going to get better run blocking-wise with J.C. Latham, they're going to get better run defensive-wise with Byron Murphy on the interior, man. I think that'll be a, a – especially when you still have Khalil Mack and then Joey Bosa. Those guys, are, especially on third downs, I think this is a outstanding fit for Byron because it allow him to get one-on-one opportunities on the interior to collapse the pocket where teams won't be able to key in on him because how can you key in on him when you got to deal with Khalil Mack, who had a great year last year, Joey Bosa, who's still one of the better pass rushers, when healthy. I think this would be an outstanding fit for both the team and what they need and then the player as well. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And that's why I wanted to ask because I don't. I think this is the first mock where we've seen the Chargers Vikings swap and the Chargers mm-hmm. end up with first-round picks. And honestly, like a Chargers team that has holes, I think that that's a – a good situation for them, right? Go ahead, trade back. You can get offensive linemen if you want to go offensive linemen. If you're trying to build the trenches, they're going to have opportunities to get defensive tackles too to, to really help you build up the trenches. So I really like that situation for the Chargers, for them to be able to move back and then still grab two positional needs. It's just a great situation for them. But DP, we have a great situation over here, man, at the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. I want to say a shout-out to every day. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day, especially on a Mock Draft Monday. You know we love doing these shows. We love doing these episodes. We are, DP, what, 10, 11 days away from the Mock Draft? Mm-hmm. We are team on this two weeks, so the fireworks are kicking off, and we're about to get this thing going. But make sure y'all stay tapped into the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. I am Keith Sanchez. You can find me on X at The Talent Code. That right there is my, go- my co-host, my guy on the ones and twos, scrolling, screening, technology, doing it all, man, Mr. Damian Parson. And you can find him on X at DP underscore NFL. And like we always like to see, y'all come talk to us because we like to talk back. Go subscribe and follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. Get the latest episode as soon as it is available. Thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our every day. As on tomorrow's episode, guys, we're getting into the quarterbacks. We're talking about the narratives, stacking them up. What have we learned over the past couple of years? How is this class being treated compared to last year's, the Trevor Lawrence class, the class that – Lawrence Fields, Mac Jones. Is that is there some residual impact coming to this class? Are we being a little too hard on them? We're gonna get into all of that and more on tomorrow's episode. So come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.